Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Sloan C workshop orientation. We um, are here today to help you have a successful workshop experience, and that includes getting set up in Blackboard Collaborate, as well as learning your way around the Moodle environment and learning the requirements in general of your workshops. We're so glad that you could all attend today. This session is being recorded so that you can review it later at your leisure. All right, so I covered this, but during this orientation, we're going to help you develop your Blackboard Collaborate skills. We also want to help you understand your workshop requirements and learn how to navigate your Moodle environment so you will have a satisfying and successful workshop experience. We have a great Sloan C Institute team who's working tirelessly behind the scenes to bring these great workshops to you. On behalf of them, I would like to thank you all for choosing Sloan C for your professional development needs and attending these workshops. My name, I'm your facilitator for today, is Bethany Bovard. And I apologize for the uh, names wrapping there at the end of the slide. I'm the person in the picture in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. And I am very happy to be here with you all today. We also have Jessica Donahoe and Zarin Eder with us today. And you can see their pictures on the screen as well. They also are helping facilitate not only this session, but also some of the workshops that are starting today. All right, so let's just look a little bit at Blackboard Collaborate for those of you who are new to it. On this slide, you can see an image of the chat window. Typically, this chat window is located in the lower left corner of your Blackboard Collaborate screen. As you can see from the image, you type your message into the text box and hit your enter key to send a message to everyone in the room. If you need to take, make the text larger or smaller, you will find these options in the chat options menu in the upper right corner of the chat window. Of course, I always need to bump up the text size on mine so that I could read everything. Um, you can also, of course, drag the corner of your chat box and make it larger. So now that we're looking at chat, if everyone could take just a minute and um, introduce yourselves in the chat. Tell us a little bit about who you are, what institution you're from, perhaps what workshop you're taking and why. Anything that you'd like to share with us would be fantastic. And I see there's a question by um, 2012 Levin Jan. Um, there is a scroll bar. And to see all the names that are in this orientation session. And I see 2012 Levin Jan is right below Saren Eder in my view, although everybody's view is slightly different. All right, we're getting some great intros in. We've got, oh, goodness, it's going quickly. We've got some fantastic people in the group from all over the place. It's great to see you all. Such a, a wide variety of uh, backgrounds and experiences, instructional designers, professors, um, and folks taking coming from different institutions and taking different workshops. Fantastic. Of course, you're all going to get to introduce yourselves in your workshops as well to each other in the discussion forum. But it's good just to get a, a feel for who's in this um, particular live session. Please continue to introduce yourselves in chat. And by the way, 
I have no problems with you carrying on conversations in the chat while we're presenting. I know that it helps people to make comments and to discuss what's being said on the screen in order to, or what's being said rather, in order to help you remember it. And I am not offended at all. So feel free to keep up that chatter. All right, so we've already seen the emoticons, but let's check them out again. You'll see that there's an emoticon button. It's the smiley face in the participant box just above the chat box. Um, and everybody use one of those emoticons and let me know how you're doing today. Just click on it once. You'll see that that what you click on will show up next to your name. And you won't have to click again. It will disappear after a few seconds, three to five seconds, typically. And it will go away on its own. This is a great way to provide some nonverbal feedback to the presenters as they're going through the session. Of course, next to the emoticon button is the step away icon. If you need to step away from your computer at any time, just click on this and it will show you or indicate away next to your name or near your name. And that way we don't call on you and then wait for a response. And then when you come back, just click on it again and you'll be back in the room. Of course, the away icon does not impact whether you can hear what's going on. It simply is a visual indication to the rest of us that you may not be um, available to respond if we call on you or type something in the chat. Everybody go ahead and give that a try just to see what happens when you step away. Fantastic. I mean, I'm still talking, and of course, you can still hear me, so you've got a good feel for what, what that button does. Again, it's just a visual indicator. Remember to step back into the room, of course. That one you have to click again in order to step back in, unlike the emoticon button that goes away on its own. All right. Now, everybody, raise your hand for online teaching. If you love online teaching, go ahead and raise your hand. You'll notice that a little number shows up next to your name. This indicates the order in which your hand was raised. So if this were a real question, the facilitator of the session could call on you in order. The hand raise icon um, stays active until you click on it again to lower your hand. So now that everybody's found that icon, go ahead and click on it again to lower your hands. All right, not so difficult so far, right? All right. We have polls also as features that some facilitators will use in the live wrap-up sessions. And the poll button is next to the hand raise icon. There's typically a yes, no poll, or sometimes a multiple choice poll. It changes depending on what the facilitator wants. So right now, let's all try the poll by answering the question, are you feeling more comfortable with the Blackboard Collaborate environment? Mark an A if you're comfortable, you're very comfortable, a B if you're getting there, and a C if you're not comfortable yet. Now sometimes you'll be able to see what other respondents are replying, and sometimes you won't. It depends on the settings that the, the facilitator has set. But I can always publish the poll so you can see on the screen there that 40% of you are feeling very comfortable and 50% of you are getting there. And um, a couple of you haven't had it responded by the time I published this result. But it looks like the majority of you are doing good and that we're not leaving anybody behind. 
So thank you all so much for answering that poll question. Now I'm going to go ahead and clear all the results. Thank you so much. All right, so now we're at our next section. Now that everybody's fairly comfortable or getting that way with Blackboard Collaborate, we want to talk a little bit about the workshop structure and requirements of your Sloan C workshops. So most of our workshops typically run 10 days. And they begin with an orientation on day one, which is today, Wednesday, the live orientation. The first five days of your workshop are typically introductions. We, we let the workshop introductions run five days because sometimes folks aren't checking in until Saturday or Sunday. However, starting on Friday, day three, you can certainly begin checking out the core readings, activities, and assignments, and so on. You'll be working on all of that, um, overlapping introductions, of course, for the rest of the workshop. And then typically, either on Thursday or Friday, um, the last two days of the workshop, one of those days will be a live wrap-up session. Most of them will be on Thursdays. Some will be on Fridays. It depends on the facilitator's schedule. And of course, um, after you turn in your assignments by the due date and take the workshop survey, then no later than one week from the end of the workshop, the facilitator will grade those um, assignments and post your grades, at which time you'll be able to download your certificate if you're taking that option. Any questions so far about the workshop structure? Just raise your hand if you have a question or type it in the chat. Kimberly, you can start activities any time now. The dates and uh, the dates listed in the workshop are recommended to help you structure your time effectively, but you can start before the recommended start date. Thank you for asking the question. That's a good one. I'll wait. I see one or two more people are typing in the chat. All right, I'll keep an eye out for those other questions if they come in. Our workshops have two options. The non-graded option is for those who don't want or need to receive a certificate of completion for the workshop. With this option, you can participate as much or as little as your professional needs and personal desires dictate. The graded option, which leads to a certificate of completion, has specific learning objectives and supporting graded activities that must be completed satisfactorily. You don't have to notify us which option you choose. If you complete the graded activity satisfactorily, you will be able to download your certificate. Please do note, however, that you can't decide to take the workshop for a certificate of completion after the workshop is over. So if you're going to go that route or you think you need to go that route and get a certificate, either because you need to show somebody at your institution that you completed it or because you want to put it in your VITA or other professional papers, then go ahead and make sure you do the graded activities during the workshop. Any questions? If so, raise your hand or type them in the chat. We'll keep an eye on that, and I will continue on. So in just a moment, I'll be taking you on a tour of a typical Sloan C workshop in Moodle. 
We'll use this time to show you the workshop structure we discussed earlier, as well as our, uh, help you learn how to manage your Moodle environment, including your profile, the communication tools, graded activities, survey, and certificate of completion. For those of you who have taken workshops with us before, you'll notice several significant changes because we've recently upgraded to Moodle 2.2. So the look and feel is a lot different than what it was in 2011. In just a moment, a new window will open on your screen to display the typical workshop in Moodle. You'll be able to resize the window to see everything simply by grabbing on the corner of the window that pops up and dragging it farther open. But you will not be able to interact with the window in any other way. While the window is open, you will still be able to see chat, raise your hand, and use the other functions of Blackboard Collaborate. And in the chat room, just so you know, that's the link to where we'll log into the workshops. I apologize. You should now be able to see my um, browser. And I'm logged in to the Going Beyond Google and Bing workshop. Give me a smiley face or a hand clap or something to let me know that you can see the browser. Fantastic. All right. So this is a typical workshop. On the left uh, column, it's a three-column layout. On the left column is all of the content. We, all of our workshops start with the, the title of the workshop and an overview and the learning objectives that will be assessed in the workshop if you're taking it for a certificate of completion. You'll find a news forum. This is where the facilitators and or the workshop support team will post news um, about the workshop, reminders of live events, and so on. If you need any help at any time, there's a help forum where you can post your questions um, um, if you're having technical difficulties, for example. And uh, we'll respond within 24 hours, but actually more like 12 unusual circumstances. Below that, and all of you found already, is the workshop orientation block with the date and time and links to join the session and watch the recording. Then we have the introductions block. And you could see there's a recommended date to be participating in introductions. In this case, January 18th to Sunday, January 22nd. There is an introduction forum. Sometimes, with some facilitators, this is a graded forum. More often than not, it's not graded. But it's a great opportunity for all of you to get to know one another and to make those professional connections that will last far beyond the workshop. There's also a um, presentation introducing the workshop and the workshop requirements. Now, this is specific to your workshop instead of a general orientation like we're doing right now. So we encourage everybody to view those presentations. They're from the facilitator, and they'll tell you all about what the requirements are and the graded activities and their expectations and so on. Think of it kind of like a syllabus, a live syllabus. Below that, you'll see the workshop content and activities block with the recommended uh, dates for working on that. But below that, you'll see that the content is broken into modules, typically, with recommended times to complete, sometimes recommended and sometimes required. You have to read the directions for when you should be working on that particular content. And those are sub sets of dates in the primary date area here. 
finally, you have your wrap-up session links and the date and time that you can join the wrap-up session. This is a great time to get your questions answered. Again, they're typically on Thursdays, so if you're having problems with the assignments, um, finishing the assignment and so on, you can go to the live session and get some support from your facilitator, some extra support about completing those assignments, as well as lots of great follow-up information and kind of a review of the important discussions that have happened during the workshop. Then there's a workshop survey that we ask you all to take to provide us with feedback to let us know how we're doing and um, let us know what you think of the workshop and provide any suggestions for improvements and so on. There's the survey and it's a required activity for anybody that wants the certificate. Um, there's also a video link. This is the same video that's the intro presentation, but we ask you to go and view that video and add your comments about your favorite thing about this particular workshop. This will show up in our, show up in our Sloan C um, YouTube channel, and we have quite a collection of videos and um, comments for our workshops and our webinars and a whole lot more, so we really encourage you to check that out. Finally, we have the Certificate of Completion block, and in this particular one, there was a whole series of deadlines, so you have to see the individual deadlines for each graded assignment. Um, in a lot of the workshops, there's one graded assignment with one deadline, and you might see that in this block. And you'll notice that this is grayed out. I can't do actually download the certificate of completion until I, the grades have been posted and I've taken the survey, which is also part of the grade. One more thing about all of these blocks here, you'll notice that there are boxes over on the right next to content. Some, the white boxes are things that you can mark as complete, help you stay on track. So once you read the introductions or read some sort of material, you can go over here and put a check mark in the box to indicate, like I just did, then I've, I've read that and now I can help myself stay on track. Um, the other, the grayed out boxes, those are the ones that the system marks. So for the introductions, as soon as you post in the introductions, the system will mark this as complete. Um, sometimes the check marks are in black and sometimes they are in red. It just depends. For example, this graded discussion, it had a minimum grade requirement. So I completed it. This is my test student account. I completed it, but I got an unsatisfactory, um, just for fun to show you this, um, when I did it. And so it's marking a, a red check, meaning I completed the assignment, but it, it needs revision in order for me to get the grade. Yeah, we really like this checkbox um, feature. Um, the activity completion report feature, it's called. All right, so is everybody feeling fairly comfortable with the layout of the workshop? Give me a smiley face. And this is, I'm using Beyond Google and Bing, of course, but this is fairly standard layout for all of the workshops. All right, now um, a few other things. We highly recommend that when you are logged in, over in the gray column, there's a navigation pane to get around between your workshops and to do things like I'm in Google and Bing workshops so I could check out the list of participants and I can get around to other workshops that I happen to be in. Below that is the settings box, and a lot of the items that you'll need to do, like editing your profile or subscribing to forums and so on, will be in this area, and also checking your grades. So you can go to the My Profile Settings, 
and edit your profile. We really encourage you to do this. Um, you'll be able to um, your name and your email address, check those to make sure they're accurate and set your other settings as necessary and put in a little description. This follows you workshop to workshop so once you've updated it, it will be updated in any workshop you take. Um, Joseph, some of the activities take a little while to load. The intro presentations, for example, will take a little bit of time, depending on how long. Kimberly, yes, this is where you place your photo. You see here that I have a picture of myself. In order to upload yours, you click on Choose File, and you will browse to your computer to upload, and then any changes that you make, always make sure to hit the update profile button. It's an easy button to miss, but if you don't do that, then your picture that you uploaded or any changes that you make won't be saved. A couple of other things that I really want to point out to you about the profile is um, often, well, Moodle will send you emails for discussion posts when, and when your assignments get graded and so on. And some people like to control that so they either don't receive emails or they receive them on a limited basis. And your profile is where you can change this so your inbox isn't completely flooded, especially during introductions week when you've got 40, 50, or 60 people posting at any given day. So this is where you can um, where you can uh, control that. One of the places there is an email digest type where you can say whether you want a single email per every forum post for forums that you are subscribed to, and we'll talk about that more in a minute, or if you want a comp just one complete digest where you get one email every 24 hours that has the contents of every single post that was made in that 24 hour period or a subjects only so you get one email every 24 hours with all of the subject lines for things that were posted and for the digest for all of these there will be links back to the forum itself. So you can choose there to control how much email you receive from the forums that you're subscribed to. The other thing that you want to check is whether you want to be auto-subscribed. Now by default, this typically says yes. So what happens is whatever forum you post to, you're subscribed and you'll start receiving emails to your email address that you have in your, listed in your account here. Um, based on whatever digest type you've chosen. If you don't want to be auto-subscribed, simply choose no, don't automatically subscribe me. And then you can um, pick and choose which forums you actually want to be subscribed to when you're actually looking at the forum. Any questions about this profile and about the email digest and subscription? Give me a smiley face if everybody's okay with all of that information. Or raise your hand for a question. Fantastic. Again, this will really help control your email so that you don't get flooded um, <laughs> in your inbox. <laughs> um, and then just make sure, again, to click on that update profile for any changes that you make. All right. Now let's go look at the forums so you can see what I mean about subscribing. I'm going to use the breadcrumbs here and I'm going to go back to the home page by clicking on this short link right there in the breadcrumbs. And I am going to go to the graded discussion forum right here. And while I'm looking at this forum, let's say I want to be subscribed to this, that is I want to receive emails when people post. 
then while I'm looking at the forum, if I go, let me close up some of this menu here. If I go to the settings box in the gray column, I see a little link that says subscribe to this forum. So I can subscribe. And if I am subscribed, it would say unsubscribe from this forum. So this is where you control subscriptions and therefore your emails that you receive. Is everybody comfortable with that? Go ahead and give me a smiley face. Fantastic. Remember, if you have any questions, you just pop those in chat or raise your hand, and I will stop the patter and respond. <laughs> All right, those are the basics of uh, getting around in your workshop. From here, we're going to go back to the presentation unless there are any questions that anybody has about Moodle or getting around in your workshop. Oh, I will show you grades. Course admin under settings is the grades link. This will take you to the grade book where you can see, and these are my grades, so I'm not sharing anybody else's private information. These are my fake grades. You can see you go to your user report and you see the name of the discussion, your grade based on what range or scale that, that was on. So, so this one I got a satisfactorily completed out of um, a scale of needs revision to satisfactorily completed. And that equates to 100% in the grade book. So I've gotten 100% for each of those three assignments, but there's one assignment here that I'm still missing. So three out of four assignments at 100%, I've, I've got a 75% grade. And I still need to finish this survey in order to be able to download my certificate. But this is how you read the um, the grade, grader report or your user grade report in Moodle. You can click on these links to go to that particular assignment or activity, or you can also access it from the um, home page. Okay. All the surveys, you will see a 1 here if you take the survey. By the way, the surveys are anonymous. It will post a grade, but we still have no way of seeing who responded in um, what fashion. You know, So even though there is a grade going for you, we know that you took it, but we have no idea which survey is yours. And um, that 1 equates to a range of a 0 to 1, and so that would be 100% in the, in the grade book. Okay. I think that's that. For that, I'm going to go ahead and stop the sharing. That was our Moodle tour. I hope that helped you understand the workshop um, structure and ways to manage your Moodle environment. So we've addressed all of our stated objectives so far for the um, orientation. And I hope you're feeling more prepared to feel successful in your workshops. Before we wrap this up, I'd like to tell you about a few other professional development opportunities that might interest you. But before I do that, I'm going to answer Beverly's question. Beverly asks, where does the assignment submission happen? Beverly, it depends on the workshop. Some of the assignments are, are graded discussions. So you post in the discussion forum like you normally would, and the facilitator will grade those posts. Other times, it's an assignment drop box where you would upload a file. And they're usually very clearly indicated by graded assignment or graded discussion as part of the title 
in the workshop so that you can tell which ones are graded and which ones are not. Does that answer your question, Beverly? Fantastic. Thank you for the question. All right, so first on our list of professional development um, opportunities or further professional development opportunities is our Sloan C Certificate Program. This program is designed to help you improve your online teaching. It's a rigorous and engaging program that begins with a nine-week foundation course to help you learn key online teaching and learning concepts and skills. It's followed by three elective workshops of your choosing to suit your professional needs and goals. Throughout it all, you will have a mentor who can support you as you develop or revise your online course using everything that you've learned in the program. It's an inherently applied or practitioner-oriented approach. We do mention research and we do provide you with research to read, but throughout the entire program, we ask that you apply everything you're learning to the development and revision of your online course. We have cohorts. We have one cohort that just began, began a couple of weeks ago, but we have cohorts that form January, March, June, and September. And um, I, if any of you are, are looking to improve your online teaching or your online course design, this is a great opportunity. And I've posted the link in the chat room for that more information on the certificate program. Another thing that we have that we're really proud of is our Sloan C Effective Practices site. Sloan C um, focus um, or has established the five pillars, pillars blah, 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 the five pillars of quality in online education to help us develop and deliver more effective online courses. And our um, effective practices are tied to those pillars of quality, learning effectiveness, effectiveness, faculty satisfaction, student satisfaction, scale, and access. Um, folks just like you post effective practices. They get peer reviewed, and then they're published online. It's a great way to, um, uh, to get items published and add them to your Vita, and, and more importantly, or at least for me or from my perspective, it's a great way to share your knowledge with the rest of the world. Sloan C is really big on communities of practice and everybody paying it forward as Kathleen, our, our executive director, associate executive director, uh, likes to say, um, to uh, take what you know and, and help others. So anyway, you can go to the pillars and you can, and there's the uh, link in the chat room, you can re see what other people have published and you can um, review those and perhaps use them to impact your own practice or submit your own effective practice there at that same site. Of course, you know we have lots of workshops. And we also have webinars. These run year-round at Sloan C, so you can extend your professional expertise when it is convenient to your schedule. In a minute, we're going to visit the Sloan Consortium site so I can show you how to ne easily navigate or locate upcoming e webinars, conferences, register for them, and so on. And I'll also show you the effective practices site and the certificate program areas as well. So one second. Thanks, Sharon. So you should be seeing our Sloan Consortium web site, which we're really proud of. We keep working very hard on organizing all this information um, to provide you with everything you need at your fingertips. We have uh, information about membership, our Sloan C Institute, which is our workshops and webinars, 
and all of our publications that you can access, in particular our Journal of Asynchronous Learning Networks and our effective practices, as well as survey reports and so on. So these are all links to help you get around a specifically or exactly where you need when you need it. You also have a menu up at the top. I know you know how to register for workshops, but I will point out that we have some wonderful workshops coming up. Um, and you can see here listed by date, or you could sort them by track if you're particularly interested in, say, design and delivery, or accessibility, or tools and techniques, and so on. So there's great ways. And then clicking on the title will take you to the more information where you can click on the session for that workshop that you would like to register for. Our webinars, you register slightly differently. Um, where you go to our webinars link and then you can click on the particular title of the webinar and then when you're logged in, and I'm not logged in right now, but when you're logged in you can register for these workshop or these webinars. You have to be logged in to, re <laughs> to register for the workshops too, of course. And then in our publications, as promised, I told you we have our effective practices which isn't showing up here. So I'll scroll down to the bottom of the page under Publications and click Effective Practices. And this is where you can find all of those effective practices that have been input, been input by colleagues all over the world. And there's lots of great information here um, about improving your courses or your teaching, uh, online courses and online teaching to um, give greater access, to provide better learning effectiveness, faculty and student satisfaction, and so on. So I've put in, by the way, more links to the webinars and workshops in the chat. But that is it for our session. I want to thank you all so much for attending orientation. We hope that it was very helpful for you. A recording of this orientation is going to be available in your workshop room in Moodle if you want to review it. And we wish you a successful and engaging workshop experience. I'll hang out if you have any questions. But other than that, we are finished. And again, thank you.